February 19th. Army camp near vos couleurs. This morning I awoke to visions of fire and steel. These nightmares come more often, now that I've seen my beloved France eaten away by years of war. I wandered through camp, ignoring the new snowfall, but observing the wounds and weariness of every soldier under my command. Observing the desperation in their eyes. It was then that I first saw the girl. She told us that her name was Joan. She told us she was but a peasant who did not know how to ride or fight. She told us that she intended to rescue France. The darkness lifted from the men's souls. Her voice rang with conviction, and we drank in her every word. I may have lost my faith, but Joan has not lost hers, and that is enough for me. Joan has asked our ragged band of soldiers to take her to Chinon, where the rightful ruler of France, the Dauphin, hides from his foes. The war-torn land in between is infested with enemy marauders, and we will lose many men. Death is by now an old companion, but for Joan, we will face it again. Bonjour, Joan. Oui. My colleague and I will escort you to the Chateau of the Dauphin, or else we will die trying. You must be wary, Monsieur the Our enemies, the English, are out in force, and their Burgundian allies are thick as rats. This question is the better part of Valor. I am Jean de Metz, and I will protect you with my life. You are Joan of Arc. I have heard your claims and believe what you say. We will follow you to Chinon. Wait! You might have need of a few archers on the road ahead. Look out! A battle rages ahead! Stay back, lest we be caught in a crossfire. Another glorious loss for France. I hope you really can turn the tide of this war, Joan of Arc. A Burgundian encampment! We'll never get through that wall without siege equipment. Soldiers everywhere! Hurry west to the river where we can make our escape! Hmm, Venison. Chinon, we have made it. The Chateau of the Dauphin. The Dauphin will see you now. As Joan's footsteps echoed down the marbled hall of the chateau, the fat and whispering dukes did naught but stare. The Dauphin himself seemed afraid as she kissed his feet. My gentle Dauphin, she demanded. Why does England claim what is ours? Why are you not crowned King of France, as is your right? The courtiers began to murmur. The Chamberlain whispered lies into the Dauphin's ear. But the Dauphin pushed the Chamberlain away and rose to meet Joan's gaze. She stands only to the shoulder of the shortest man, but all of us must look up to speak to her. I know not what silent conversation passed between the Dauphin and his would-be savior. But it was obvious that his majesty was in the same thrall as we.
March 26th, Shino. It is one thing for a band of dispirited soldiers to put their trust in a teenage girl. It is entirely another for that girl to be given command of the army of an entire nation. We were filled with pride when we heard the Dauphin's heralds pronounce Joan the Maid as commander of the army of France. So that she may look like a general, the Dauphin presented Joan with a great war horse and a suit of white armor. Joan instructed me to look for an ancient sword buried beneath the altar of a local church. I was skeptical, but not only did the man unearth a rusted blade, but we found that the sword had belonged to Charlemagne, grandfather of France. I shall not doubt her word again. Still visible on the hilt was the Fleur de Lys. Joan adopted the Fleur de Lys as her symbol and had it blazoned on her battle standard. Wherever Joan goes, the standard goes also. It goes with us to Orléans. The city of Orléans is one of the finest in France. But it is under siege by our enemies. England and Burgundy is about to fall. This war has dragged on for 100 years, with precious few French victories. The people of Orléans need a savior. They will receive Joan of Arc. I am. Yvette Terrasse. Oh, Yvette. I will proud you. I will press you. Yvette. Kate Yvette. Yvette. Bon chance, John. Oui. Que fait? Our Yvette. city needs help. Oil. The English are coming. Certes. Pirates. Oil. Libé. Certes. Pirates. Certes. Welcome to Blois. Certes. The army of France. Certes. Okay. Now, on to Orléans. We need to get to supply the fast English. to finally learn to fight. Joan prophesied that she would be wounded at Orléans. In the height of the battle, an arbalest bolt knocked her from her horse. She could not 
believe our misfortune. But as we carried Joan away from the carnage, the battle was won. Orleans was free. When we entered the city, the entire population cheered us on from windows, rooftops, and city streets. They fired artillery into the night sky and shouted aloud their nickname for Joan. La Pucelle! The Maid of Orleans. June 14th, Orléans. Our rescue of Orléans was a setback for our enemies, but only a minor one. The English still possess half of France. Tragically, we have cooled our heels for weeks, while the Dauphin's advisors debate. Joan became irritated with the delay and reassembled her army. She talks of nothing but her mission to drive the English into the sea. The force of Joan's will is titanic. She has gathered to her banner swearing brigands and knaves and turned them into patriots and heroes. Among them is the man Lair, a giant clad in plate mail. He drives men on with curses and fists. There will be plenty of English necks for Lair to break at Pate. Pate is the gateway to the Loire River Valley. The English hold the Loire in a grip of steel. Was the huge army and the surgeon fast off and devastate the countryside. Joan leads us to Pate to capture the English castles. However, we must avoid Fastov's army until we are strong enough to face his veterans. Okay, La Hill wishes to kill something. See ships, we can cross the Loire River and deal with any English warships we encounter. The blood on the hill sword is almost dry. Oyel, Sert, Oyel, Sert, Libé, Sert, Libé, Libé, Oyel, Sert, Que fait, Oyel, Libé, Oyel, Libé, 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 Oyel, Sert, Libé, Sert, Libé, Oyel, Libé, 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 Sert, Libé, Oh,
Kia se. Kia se. Oye, Lushkun, de Rax. Bife. Kia Lushkun. Oye, se. Oye, de Rax. Oye, Bife. Se, de Rax. Oye, Lushkun. Lushkun, que fe. Bife. French are attacking our castles. Enough of this! I shall deal with Joan of Arc. Two English castles destroyed. We have but one more to raise. Them English can't make a castle stronger than Lahir. I come for you, Joan of Arc! Do your worst, you English fop. That's the last of them. The English will be forced to surrender the Loire Valley back to the French. Another victoire for Joan of Arc. After Pate, the myth of English invulnerability was dispelled. Now, our army knows it is possible to win, but only if we are resolute and cunning. The English are a most deadly enemy, and their humble men have decimated the charge of French knights time and time again. To make matters worse, we now face enemies on both sides. The Dolphin's advisor spent more and more time wrangling, jealous of Joan's influence at court. I pray that Joan can complete her divine mission before the Dolphin's envious advisors betray her. June 25th, Orléans. Dead France is returning to life. Our army swells with new recruits. In olden times, Men swore fealty only to their particular lord. Now, we fight not for the insolent lords and ladies, but for France. For all of us, Joan is France. There is no distinction in our minds. The Dauphin himself has arrived in Orléans. Never have I seen such a celebration. France needs a king, so we must escort the Dauphin to Reims, where he can be properly crowned. Yet, the city of Reims is dangerously menaced by the Anglo-Burgundian army. The cities of Troyes and Chalon also bar the way. 
Job commands that we must liberate all three cities before the coronation. And we eagerly seek to fight. Joan of Arc is attacking our camp. Do not let her cross the river. We were assigned to help you construct your military camp. Kay, Bucheron. Vera. To arms! The French are trying to cross the river! Oh yeah. Oh Thank <laughs> you. 
Nation of the Dauphin can proceed. As we rode into Reims, a sea of peasants and lords knelt before Joan. Some even knelt to kiss her horses' hoofprints. Cannon thundered, and a thousand flags danced. In the enormous palace, the Dauphin knelt before the Archbishop and rose as King of France. Prayers, anthems, and sermons filled the great chateau. Interspersed among perfumed dukes and ladies were tattered soldiers from our army, many still bearing wounds. Joan herself was at the King's side, as was her bedraggled battle standard. Despite the celebration, I know in my heart that this war is far from over. Our fathers and grandfathers died fighting the English. Joan gives us hope, but I do not know if hope is enough to ensure victory. September 3rd. France. France has a king once more. However, as Joan gains influence with the people, jealousy grows within the court. The king's evil advisors now seek to destroy Joan. It is only a matter of time before they succeed in poisoning the king's mind. Joan must hurry to fulfill her mission. Paris, the jewel of France, has been under English tyranny for decades and French patriots trapped within the city are eager to escape. We are now marching on Paris, hoping that the reinforcements we have been promised will arrive in time. Paris is just ahead. Let us locate the refugees and escort them to the rendezvous point with the king's men. Okay. Prêt, libé. Prêt, libé. Prêt, oh oui, libé. Prêt, 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 libé. Okay. 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 Okay.
We have rescued the refugees. Now, we should head to the bridge of the Seine River for the rendezvous with the King's men. Where are those blasted reinforcements? We are all the king of the fall of the Seine. Or worse, we are on our own. We must hurry. Compagnon! We are tired of making English boots. We follow where you lead, son of Ark. Oh, 
You are victorious, and our peasants are safe. I just hope Jean can make it to the castle. The refugees fled into the chateau of Compiègne. Joan was trapped outside. The Francian soldiers knocked her from her horse and paraded around with their prisoner. None of us can sleep knowing our precious Joan of Arc languishes in a Burgundian prison. The soldiers stare at the uncaring sky, condemning themselves for being unable to save her for being unable to save France. Paris was the first major defeat ever dealt to our army. Had the king sent the promised reinforcements, we would have captured the city. Now it is France's darkest hour. July 14th, Bordeaux. No Joan of Arc. A rich world made empty and poor. The English put her on trial as a heretic. Joan's mind was as sharp as her sword, and she avoided all the cunning verbal traps of her prosecutors. In the end, Joan would not renounce her mission. The English found her guilty and burned her at the stake. But her death is not in vain. La Pucelle is the rallying cry, as peasant and nobleman alike take arms. My army is an army of the people. And even without the king, we are poised to strike at the English stronghold of Castillon. A victory at Castillon will crush the English pretensions in France forever. Should I die in this battle? I die for the Maid of Orléans. I die as a patriot of France. Sweet Joe. I shall avenge you. Lord Jocelyn, the army awaits your command. La Hill's sword is not bloody enough. We'll see how English longbows fare against French cannon. It's a good day for La Hill to die. Hey. Hello. Perhaps we should defeat the Burgundians and establish our base in their own town. Just a thought. Okay. 
Bûcheron et Bûcheron. Oh, il y a le Jamie Bell. Faut faire. Le Jamie Bell. Oh, il y a le Jamie Bell. Bûcheron. Faut faire. Le Jamie Bell. Oh, il y a le Jamie Bell. Le Jamie Bell. Ferrax, certes. Libet. Ferrax, certes. Oh, il y a le Jamie Bell. Libet. Certes. Pirate. century of English toil, blood, and victories was reversed in a little over a year by a teenage girl. The hundred years here has an ending. Even more importantly, Joan's acts ignited a sense of French nationalism. Peasants and nobles alike no longer belong to lords and kings, but to France herself. We will not let Joan be forgotten. Already, statues and stained glass portraits have been commissioned in hundreds of towns and cities throughout France. The verdict of guilt was rightfully reversed, and I expect that Joan of Arc will soon be beatified as a saint. Sometimes the outcome of history is determined by strength of arms, other times by happenstance. But in 15th century France, History was determined by the will of a young girl. The only person in history to command the armies of an entire nation at the age of 17. <laughs> <laughs>